to the Denbydale Amateur Radio Club. And the subject tonight is scouting an amateur radio. And uh, we've got a speaker, uh, Mike Zero Sierra Uniform Delta, uh, who's from the West Midlands. You can tell us exactly where, uh, Stuart, when you uh, give us your talk. Um, and Stuart is a scout leader. Uh, and I met Stuart uh, through the GQRP club and the convention that we ran in September. And uh, we kept in contact and said, I'd like to get Stuart to come and talk to the club on uh, scouting and amateur radio. So welcome, Stuart, and a very, very big welcome to lots of people now identifying themselves from various scouting groups, uh, some scout leaders and people involved in scouts around Yorkshire, West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, Bradford. So welcome to all of you and uh, one or two from other parts of the country as well. So what I'm going to do, Stuart, is uh, hand over to you directly and um, hand the microphone to you and uh, let you introduce yourself and the subject. Stuart. Thanks very much, Nick. Right, let's start sharing the screen. And that should have appeared. Is that okay, Nick? Yeah, you're on. Yeah, uh, lovely. You, I'll let you go. Excellent. I'll just try and hide that. Okay. So, my name's Stuart Griffiths. Uh, I'm MNOD SUD. I'm going to talk about uh, scouting and amateur radio. Um, I do have to apologise for those um, from abroad. This is very heavily based on UK scouts. Um, however, should be able to use a lot of the uh, tips of that. So, who am I? Well, I've um, been a, uh, I've held an amateur radio license since 2017, had a bit of a mad year going from foundation to um, my full license. Um, a number of various groups, um, but um, I'm from a Wivel Amateur Radio Society uh, based in South Birmingham. I've been a scout since 1993 when I joined as a beaver and a leader since 2007, so I've been doing it for a while. Um, I'm currently a scout leader and an explorer uh, leader, um, dealing with two uh, different age groups, which I'll talk about a bit later on. So the sort of three key areas I want to talk about tonight are really giving you an idea of what are scouts, and how can you find them? Because they can be harder than you think to find. Um, what sort of badges that you can help with? And then sort of ideas for sessions and tips for working with uh, groups of scouts. Um, it's not easy. And there are lots of ways that you can make your life a lot easier. So first of all, what is a scout and how do you find them? Now, you can always use your nose. They do kick up a big stink. Um, so my personal sort of interpretation of what a scout is, it's a person who is young or old who is willing to learn new skills and share those with other people. They always want to try new things. They're friends with everyone. You know, we're fully inclusive as an organization. We have girls, boys, um, and everything in between, along with, you know, different abilities. And that's all things to think about. Um, and most importantly, a scout wants to have fun. There's no point in doing scouting if it's not fun. So this image here, you'll see three different uh, sort of colours of uniform. And um, so scouts is uh, arranged into different age groups. Some of them you'll be familiar with, um, seeing as uh, you were one, uh, Nick. Um, so we've got beavers who are in the uh, blue jumper. Um, they're six to eight. Cubs, eight to ten and three quarters in the green jumper. And then you go into shirts with uh, scouts, uh, 10 to 14, who wear the uh, sort of turquoise shirts. Then explorers wear a, wear a very dark brown um, shirt. They're 14 to 18. Uh, network and leaders wear the same sort of colour shirt. Uh, network is really there for leaders 
of a certain age to be able to go and build large fires and do silly things without children around. Sort of the main aim for them. Um, there is a new section coming in, um, but they're four to um, six. And I think they're called hedgehogs. I can't quite remember. Um, but I don't think there's going to be anything really that you can do amateur radio wise with that age group or that you'd want to really come. I mean, the beavers are hard enough. So how do you find scout leaders? Well, scout groups as a whole. Um, the internet is your friend. So the scouts website has a really good group finder tool if you want to find an individual group. Um, you just take a uh, postcode uh, in, and it's there on the um, home page. Pardon me, a group um, finder. Um, and around the Denbydale um, sort of area, you've got uh, 5th, 7th, 22nd, 23rd, um, yeah, 23rd uh, Huddersfield and Shelley Explorers. Um, now, Scout groups are sort of grouped together and they're sort of administered by a, a district. So you'll find that all those groups are part of Huddersfield South East District. And that is really sort of a the level to aim for if you want to grab um, as many groups as you can. Um, you could also go to a county level. So all these districts are arranged into a county. Um, so Huddersfield Southeast District is part of West Yorkshire County. Um, in this case, I would say the county might be too big because you've got 14 districts and it seems to cover a huge area. But like in Birmingham, you can get away with um, the county levels appropriate. We've only got five districts and it's relatively easy to get from one end of the city to the other, whereas going between different ends of West Yorkshire would be problematic. Um, so, with each of those sort of, uh, with the district and the county, you have um, a role called a uh, commissioner who's sort of in charge. They're the contact details to really look for. Um, they'll be able to send out, you know, any sort of offers of help that you have to a larger number of people. And it saves you trying to contact each individual group. Um, the other way you can find scout groups is keeping your eyes out open for, huts in strange places. They often are, if they, um, you know, community centers, anywhere like that, um, or just weird huts, um, it can be quite strange where some of them are. It's all sort of land that people have managed to acquire. Um, but typically there will be a sign and there should be contact details on that sign. Um, so which badges can you help with? So it's sort of, if you email a um, sort of a scout leader and go, oh, I can help you with something. If you can start being specific, that will start encouraging them. Um, because they probably don't know what amateur radio is to begin with. And they often sort of have this, Ooh, okay. Uh, I don't know. There's too much choice. If you can sort of offer something, they'll probably bite your hand off there and then if you're willing to uh, sort of run an evening because it means they don't have to plan an evening. And uh, that is always helpful. So with the beavers, there's no particular badge. Um, but with cubs, there's one badge that I found where definitely uh, amateur radio comes in. Uh, it's a communi communicator badge. And it's really simple. They've just got to send a message across amateur radio. That's the wording that they've used. Um, nice, simple. And then there's taking part in a jamboree on the air. For those who aren't aware, a jamboree on the air is an event where um, basically scouts are encouraged around the world to contact each other using radio. There's also another event um, called Jamboree on the Internet, which runs alongside it. It's ran on one uh, weekend, normally in early October. 
Uh, there are badges associated with it, and there's a dedicated website, um, which I've got a link to at the end of this presentation. With Scouts, there's, again, the communicator badge. There's two options. One, I think, is better to run with them. So option one is the obvious amateur radio one, where they basically say if they've got any form of radio, amateur radio license, they get the badge. Or they can do a lot of work, which really looks like doing the foundation sort of course. I'm not overly happy with this badge in a lot of ways. It, it's reasonable. It just doesn't seem that exciting in a way. It gets a bit fixated over, well, 25 stations. I, I don't know. It also seems quite a lot to do in one evening. Um, which isn't so good if you're trying to run a single event. Um, however, option two is much more reasonable to do in a single night. Um, and this is really, it's about using Morse or semaphore. Because remember, we have Sea Scouts and they tend to want to wave flags. Um, now with this, I think it's really, you would run this session just as you would with the uh, Morse appreciation for the foundation. And while it says send Morse at a rate of five words per minute, you don't they don't necessarily need to be decoding that at that rate. So, you know, they could write down the dits and the dars for five words transmitted over a minute and then sort of translate that into, um, you know, proper alphabet. Um, and do the, the same again, the other way around. That would, I would certainly give the badge for that, that's showing the effort and the care. Um, the rest of it all starts being quite familiar, phonetic alphabets and Q codes. Then the other sort of side which you could start helping with is the electronics activity badge. And it's quite simple, but the advantage is that you should be able to get a funding from the IET to do this. The IET do offer, um, as the Institute of Engineering and Technology, um, they do offer grants for educational use, and this could be a way of doing both badges with the, their money um, to buy bits for circuits and things and whatnot. Um, and the fact that one has, to, be soldered doesn't mean it necessarily needs to be on a PCB. There's no reason why you can introduce them to Manhattan style construction or anything like that, as long as they get soldering iron out. I do have to give one bit of warning with this. It is really scary trying to teach scouts how to solder. I have tried this a few times, and if you've got more than two soldering at once, it just becomes a nightmare. Um, one add out to two soldering. It seems the only way I can cope. I've tried with more and it does get become really, really stressful because they will start jabbing it into their hands. They, it just happens. They are special at times. You would think hot thing means ow, but they've not quite learned that lesson yet. Um, there are other badges that this can help with, um, you know, it could count towards the skill challenge because you're doing problem solving or, you know, doing a Jota would be part of your world challenge badge because there's talk to a foreign scout. Um, personal challenge, you could always set them various bits to do with radio and the scientist badge, you could do some um, radio um, based experiments, sort of focus on antennas, something like that. Explorers, there's only a couple of options. Um, so they don't have a communicator badge, but they have a science and technology badge. Um, there's two options which can be used for this. So the first one is really vague and ambiguous. You know, take part in an activity involving radio. 
So you could encourage them to come to meetings um, or you could set up a couple of sessions over a period of time. Um, the demonstration could be between themselves. You know, they could be showing each other how to do it. Um, and that does work fairly well with that age group. The sort of option four is um, doing it with electronics. Again, it just gives you more things you can tap into in terms of funding um, with grants. Uh, and I think with Asha Radio, you really, we really need to sort of get the, involved more with this sort of hacking community. And this is a good way of sort of bridging that gap and could capture the uh, sort of attention of some uh, young people. Um, the other thing with Explorers is that they have the uh, Chief Scout Platinum and Diamond Awards. And these are sort of the top awards they can work towards and they're modeled mostly off of um, the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. I think Platinum ties to Bronze and Diamond ties to the Duke of Edinburgh Silver. Um, so there's no reason why they couldn't use amateur radio as the skill that they've got to do. Um, they've got to do an activity in school, um, a physical activity and a, a service activity for a certain duration. Um, with the Duke of Edinburgh side, there will be some element of sign off. And I think there's an element of training involved. Um, relatively simple and only one person in the sort of club needs to be able to do that. I just have to say, yes, they have been turning up, they have been doing something. So the important thing for this talk really is how to run a session and how to make your life easy so that you encourage them, spark interest in the scouts. And when I say scouts, I'm talking about all the age groups. And if I use young person, it's anyone under 18. Um, so I'll start using the terms into um, intermittently. Um, so I think the first thing to remember is that these people have all grown up with mobile phones and the internet. So talking to someone in a foreign country without a wire isn't unusual to them. They're used to this. But they're very interested in how things work. And the really interesting thing with um, young people is that they become really enthusiastic when you are really enthusiastic. If you can show that, they really start joining in. It's interesting to see. So I think a key thing to uh, any session is really to focus on doing. The more that they do, the more they start remembering and the more they enjoy and take part. So, you know, if you've got something to assemble, that's great. Why not get them to plug the um, various leads into a radio? Get them to set up the station, why not? Um, they'll need help, of course they will. But it gets them doing things, get them used to it, and they start being confident with it. And it's not mysterious anymore. Um, get them to sort of play with um, the dials, twiddle the knobs and um, press the buttons. The only thing is, I think there's um, limitations with, uh, with the license about them um, having ultimate control over the PTT. There are ways you can always have a kill switch in between. So you ultimately have control of it. Um, that you could operate with your foot while they're sort of holding the microphone. Um, why don't you use them to be part of your demonstration? You know, get one of the um, young people to be a radio wave and sort of make them move between transmitters and show you different methods of propagation that way. There's, the more they, they're doing, the better. The other thing to remember is to really try and relate it to something they can appreciate. And, you know, and a really good example is using a mobile phone. It is a radio, it's got an antenna. They don't realize it's got an antenna. They don't think about 
how that 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 is a radio. Um, and you start talking about well, you know, it's QRP levels coming out of that, but because the frequency is used, it doesn't go as far as you can achieve with a HF rig. And that is the sort of thing that will spark the interest in them. Do you hear a replay? Uh, what was that, sorry? Sorry, just testing the audio. Good evening, everybody. Oh, um, right. Um, the other thing to remember is that antennas are magic to them. They don't see aerials. They, they only ever see them with TV and the radio. So they will be baffled by antennas. And that is where you can start having fun with them. And you can start showing the fun aspects. Um, when you're trying to think of what to do for a session, think about what interests you. Because if it interests you, you've got a chance of communicating that with them and taking them and hopefully getting them interested in it at the same time. The only thing that I think, uh, you know, if you're really keen on talking about the very sort of medical issues on uh, 80 meters or um, two meters, they might not be interested in that. But you never know. You could be surprised at what interests uh, young people as a whole. Um, but you know, if you really get, if you really enjoy QRP and sort of go more, how far can you go? Why not get them involved and um, show them whisper and show them how far they can um, transmit? Those sort of sessions can help spark something. Now, sort of on the practical side, when you're planning a session um, that you want to hold with a group, um, please involve the leaders. They know they're young people. They know if Johnny is going to be really annoying if you do something for too long, or they understand what the sort of attention span is of their groups. Um, they can give you quite a lot of advice on that, and they can sort of give you advice in terms of things they're interested in to some extent and they can also sort of just help sort of give you ideas as well um the other sort of uh, groups to talk to are the um, amateur radio scouts active support unit so there's active support units um which are groups of adults who have particular skills or they are adults who want to be involved in scouting but can't commit every week um, and this is a way of them being involved. Um, I'm a member of this, we don't get that many people contacting us, um, mostly because I don't think people really appreciate we exist is one of the things. Um, so this is me doing my bit, um, if you contact via that email we'll come and help. Um, biggest bit of advice I can give is to keep to small groups. It's really hard to deal with more than 10 children at a time. It's really difficult. Um, and really, more than six is quite hard. So if you try and keep them into sort of small groups of six, that's great. Um, in order to make that work, you might have to do a sort of a round robin um, affair for a session. So you get them to move between sort of bases or different activities every 15 minutes. That works really well, keeping their attention span, gets them moving and sort of stops them from getting fidgety. Uh, a big thing to make your lives easier in a lot of ways is following good safeguarding um, uh, sort of advice and in scouting we have a thing called the yellow card there's a link to that at the end of this um, it's full of really sensible advice and it's essentially to protect you from the kids and to protect the kids from you and it's essentially things like don't be on your own with children now yourselves if you were running an activity you should never be left alone with children you should always have a leader with you 
the leaders should know that and do that. Um, if they're not, grab them, tell them they should be with you. They might need reminding. Um, that is a really important thing because that protects you from any sort of accusations. Now, you know, I haven't had any accusations, but I've always sort of followed this advice. Um, I haven't known anyone else really with it, which has been good. Uh, but it's really nice, sensible advice. Um, so sort of ideas for sessions. I run sort of sessions where I've used PMRs to get them used to playing with radios in a sort of low risk sort of way. Um, that's been quite good. And you can get them to sort of play with ranges and sort of see what happens if, you know, stick big lumps of um, concrete in the way and things like that. Um, something I want to try and do is build some antennas for two meters. And I think it would be simple and it sort of will get them going, oh, okay, this is really, yeah, this is quite a simple thing to do. Um, I mean, we all know it's not particularly easy building antennas, but then again, you could stick a lump of wire out and go, well, it should work with a few caveats. It helps demystify radio forum. Um, the other thing is to do what you do on a field day, but do it with the scouts outside. You could do it as part of a camp, do it as a Saturday afternoon activity or something like that. That gives you a chance to play, get some doing other things as well. And they like being outside. Um, doing a fox hunt with them, that could be quite good. Um, you could even get them to build sort of transmitters for that. Um, there's good old uh, jamborees on the air, and why not get involved in a uh, SOTA and POTA, uh, summits on the air and parks on the air. No reason why you couldn't go out to a park, set up something and try and activate it with them. Um, the other things, I mean, uh, my, um, so Birmingham County, we run a uh, yearly camp where we try and get groups through uh, badges, which are particularly hard to do. And one of those badges um, that we've been doing is the communicators badge with the amateur radio aspect. Uh, we managed to do that online. Um, that worked quite well. And that was really getting them all looking at SDRs and playing with the online SDRs. Um, that, that works well. So there's the sort of uh, free links, the Scouts website, um, safeguarding with the yellow card, and then the uh, Jamborees on the air. And thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you, uh, Stuart, um, and uh, a great introduction to uh, the discussion tonight. Uh, and uh, various people have joined. I, there's one person who's online who I just want to say a particular welcome to because he's a young scout, Oliver, uh, Mike Seven, Oscar Sierra Hotel, who, if I remember rightly, Oliver, you were part of the Jota station we set up at Bradley Wood uh, last year, the end of 2019, and uh, made a number of contacts uh, on the radio uh, while you were there, which was great. And uh, we were very pleased uh, to have your assistance in what we were doing there in doing some of the things that you've talked about, Stuart, introducing people to Morse code, uh, playing with radios and making contact with other Jota stations around, around the world. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to throw it open and see who wants to make a contribution, ask a question, um, or in, other, in any other way participate in the meeting. So who's, who wants to go first? If I can't see you, because I'm trying to scroll between two screens, uh, just unmute yourself and, and dive in. Right, who's first? Everyone's gone very shy. Uh, it's Stuart here from South Yorkshire Scouts. Yeah, I'll go first then, <laughs> just to introduce myself. Um, my role, one of my roles within scouting is for South Yorkshire County Scout Council 
is uh, county, uh, I manage the county communications team, who uses PR, PMR equipment, which I'll come quickly back onto that in a minute. Uh, but I'm also advisor regarding amateur radio. So just to back up one or two things that uh, Stuart said, over the last couple of years, uh, we've actually increased the presence of amateur radio uh, within the county of South Yorkshire. Yeah. And we've got very yeah. successful Jota stations at Hesley Wood Scout Activity Centre. Mm -hmm. um, and we have found that the, that, um, the young people really are interested uh, you, you might think they're not going to be, but we have found they are. And if you consider that we run from Friday night, where we fully book from 7 o'clock till 10 p.m., and then Saturday and Sunday we're running from, again, 10 o'clock until 10 o'clock Saturday night. Uh, and same on, on Sunday, we tend to pack up at, at lunchtime. So the, the kids are interested and we find that by giving them different opportunities on that weekend to do things. So we have uh, five, six different bases running that weekend uh, that does, so they do a round robin and do some activities on site as well. Now, prior to that, what we have started doing is going round to groups as well who are wanting to do the communicator badge. And all right, I'm involved in scouting anyway and Barry who's on, G4VRT comes along with us and I've got two or three other people who come along who are not amateurs but are part of the county radio team. They will go along to groups and give them talks about um, radio and, and what we do, we, we take the county radio equipment along which is PMR stuff um, and we do various activities with them on the night so they can get some of the communicator badge activities done on one night and then hopefully come along to the Jota meet Jota weekend and finish it off and we're finding that that is working quite successful and we are building those links now with Sheffield Amateur Radio Club unfortunately this year has put us behind a bit uh, but that's how we're doing it in South Yorkshire we're finding uh, the kids are interested uh, you think they're not going to be because they can use the mobile phones etc um, one thing that did surprise me, the Jamboree on the internet section, they don't get that excited about um, because they said it's just like typing messages and it's not being very successful as, for us, that part of it. So uh, that's my input. If anybody's got any questions, I, you know, as regards how we do things or anybody's got anything, uh, suggestions for me, willing to take anything on board. Sorry, you can't see me, but my camera was working earlier today, but now it's not for some reason. So that's my input anyway, and thank you very much for the opportunity to do so. Great, thanks, Stuart. Uh, Stuart, do you want to comment on Stuart's comments there? Uh, yeah, um, one thing I did forget to add um, is that the Scouts do have access to um, a business license for various um, frequencies in uh, VHF and UHF range, um, limited to five watts, and that can help in running a session. Um, but most leaders will look at you blankly um, if you ask them about that side of it. Um, but I, it, yeah, thanks for that, Stuart. It's interesting um, that you're having such success. Yeah, I just, I'll, I'll come back on that PMR stuff. Because we've got that PMR stuff, uh, we can use it, but part of the, um, I think it was the Explorer one, helping on events and using radios. We do help at a couple of large events, uh, one national event, providing radio communications with PMR for safety side, but also because I also manage the active support unit on our county site, we've got radios on there. So as part of what the staff are doing, I, I go through every year, we do a talk at the beginning of the year to the new staff and the established staff just to remind them on the correct procedures, etc. So you, you can get explorers coming along and helping on events. So if we've got a big event next year, we can have explorers helping on that event who we'll possibly have got access to a radio. So that, mm. that can help them towards their awards as well, as well as learning them. Sometimes you have to remind them and adults, uh, you know, the good practices. So that, that, that's another way that they can be introduced to it as well. Okay, brilliant. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Um, right, who wants to go next? I will. Yes, go on, Edward. Um, well, just to add, just to add to that, 
Um, when we do uh, radio things at, at um, our local camp, Barnswood, which is situated between Macclesfield and Leek on the top row, uh, we do jam on the air. And not just about the radios, we do, we get them to come with, do each group will have a set country and they'll go around doing different uh, activities with that country or each base. Then they'll come in towards and they'll try, if we can, get their country, but uh, never works, never always guaranteed, but uh, sometimes uh, that's why we say to them, never uh, go uh, adventurous, just uh, do something that's easy. But uh, yeah, and we uh, also, we one year, wasn't it last year, no, year before last, when we had that um, big um, solar, solar uh, flares and stuff, we had two meters working and the kids really enjoyed learning learning about uh, the difference between two metres when it's open and when it's uh, when it's not. And uh, we got into France and they were amazed that we could hear a beacon on one watt. It was so... I, I was amazed and all. We had to make an aerial. As we were saying, there was uh, some wire and a bit of coat, a bit of wood and stuff. And we used some twigs from the ground. Just had to make a quick dive, a quick uh, beam. For two metres, it was that good. So, yeah, and on the uh, PMR stuff, we have a uh, group, uh, uh, Mark, uh, called, one called Martin, he does the uh, uh, communications team and they always uh, go out and do various uh, events and things like that. And they also come in and help run uh, activities with the jam on the air. And surprisingly, the kids say, oh yeah, the, radio, the um, computers, yes, great, great. But then they'll come and see the radio and their mind changes. So yeah, that's... Uh, that's what uh, our group, our uh, district, we, my district's uh, Maxfield and Congleton uh, district uh, in Cheshire. So uh, we also, um, one year, we do a thing called Chambery, uh, which is a, a big international uh, camp, camp for county. And one year we had um, uh, some radios up, I forgot which group it was, and uh, they did. That's how I got, that's how I uh, one got interested in radio, uh, one of them anyway. And they showed me, which is really, really interesting. Anyway, I'll pass it to somebody else and thank you. Right, well, thank you, Edward. That's very interesting. Right, who else, who wants to go next? Yeah, Gerald, G3SDY. Yeah, okay there. Yeah, we've been doing jamboree on the air for yonks because uh, the, the Denverdale Radio Club was formed after we'd done a jamboree on the air at a, a local village uh, chapel, which was the meeting place for one of the scout groups around here. And, I dragged a lot of am every amateur I could lay my hands on. I dragged them in to start on it <laughs> and help out. And then um, during the course of that event, one an old chap I thought came up to me. He's, he's passed away now, but he was he was the secretary of the Denverdale Club later because he came up to. I bet we could get all this lot into a club, you know. And I've got just the place at Denverdale, so uh, that's how it got formed. So we've been quite interested in Jota since then. It's really sort of one of our key key aspects. I'm sure Darren will agree with me on that. And um, he, he, Darren came to one where, where we, the scout had a hut right up on the top of a hill, um, an, an old house, really old, and lots of holes in the floor, you know, that old. And uh, we set up a radio station there and it was great fun, including, I think it was, was it Roger XXR, Darren, who made a mosque out of a, 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 a beer bottle top and a piece of old axo blade? And you started sending CW with that as well. The scouts thought it was pretty fun anyway. And um, we've gone down to the local West Yorkshire one now, don't we, Darren, at uh, near Brig House. Uh, Bradley Woods, is it? Yeah, I think so. And uh, we've been doing one down there. And uh, I'm looking now at next time, trying to do some direction finding using 70 cents because the aerials are smaller and doing it on amplitude modulation because she can make a simple dial detector, pick up the signal enough for them to be able to find out where the, where the transmitter's hidden. And so it should be a very simple operation to perform. So that's another idea. Right, I'll throw it back on to Stuart and Nick. <laughs> thank you for letting me in. Yeah, thank you, Gerald. Stuart, do you want to comment? Yeah, the, that's a fantastic idea using the uh, direction finding. That's what I meant with the fox hunt. Um, and certainly that will, if you can get them building that, that, that's really good. I think, Andrew, you had your hand up. Yeah, Andrew. good evening, everybody. Um, thank you, Darren, for inviting me along 
to the uh, the meeting tonight. Um, the old building which Gerald was talking about was called Upper Knoll Farm, and that was used until 1998. It's now long. It's no longer um, derelict. It's now lived in, and I believe all the floorboards are all mended now, Gerald. Okay. So yeah, thank you very much. It's been very interesting, uh, and I would like to probably take you guys up some point in uh, maybe inviting you along to the Home Firth Explorers. Uh, we do have 20 plus in our group. Uh, we will probably have to split that uh, maybe over two, uh, two evenings. So thank you very much. It's been very interesting listening to you all. Brilliant. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for that. Right, anyone else want to come in on the discussion? Darren? Yeah, the one thing that we've got coming up next year is the big camp over at Harrogate. It was postponed this year for obvious reasons. Um, hopefully that will go ahead. I think it's the first bank holiday in May. So I'm assuming we'll be asked to go along and put the station on there. Um, and it's probably something we already need to be thinking about um, what we can do for the Scouts rather than just put on a demonstration station. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very good point, Darren. Um, uh, and I think it, between now and then, we ought to give a bit of thought to what kind of things we could do, as you say, other than just an ordinary demonstration station. Right. Um, who else wants to go? Um, trying to quickly shovel through. Yes, Anthony, M0IFA. Yeah, thanks very much. I <clears throat> just have a, a very short... I'm not involved at all, I'm afraid, with scouting. Although the club I belong to, Banbury Amateur Radio Society, does have somebody who is a scout leader and uh, does run evenings for the scouts of Badgers. Um, my interest is, and just to pass it around and ask a few people, what sort of little kits would you, would you have these scouts build? Little audio amplifiers or Morse code trainers or, or what sort of thing? Uh, a very good question, Anthony. Um, and I mean, there are lots of simple kits around, and I think what you've hit on there is correct. Uh, so um, a Morse code oscillator is very simple to build, isn't it? Um, although I, I, I did listen to the point that you made, Stuart, earlier, that um, uh, getting a group of um, uh, young scouts together with um, soldering irons is um, a hazardous activity. Yeah, but it's still worth doing. It's just sometimes it's letting go of your own worries and letting them injure themselves. <laughs> the, if you're stupid enough to stick it into your hand, yeah, you probably deserve to feel a bit of pain and hopefully you learn. It's just a bit stressful as you're watching them do it. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, more oscillators... I think anything that is less than uh, less than sort of like 15, 20 components, I think it's probably a good shout. Yeah, yeah okay. there was a project. There was a project in uh, Practical Wireless uh, a couple of years ago, which was it supposed to be a uh, suggestion for something like a jamboree on the air. Uh, which was for a bat detector. Uh, I thought that would be a particularly good idea down at Bradley Wood, where I'm sure there are plenty of bats. I know uh, David M0RIU did look into it, and I think it was feasible, but we left it a little bit too late. Uh, also, I've just seen a message from uh, Oliver that unfortunately the big camp was already being cancelled for next year. I thought it was a bit close, being uh, early May, and it sounds like that decision's already been uh, made to pull that. But uh, there's always a chance we can get involved with, uh, with scout groups doing their uh, annual camps and things like that in the summer. Back to you, Nick. OK, yeah, thanks, Darren. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks for your message, Oliver. Gerald? You're muted again, Gerald. Your microphone needs to be turned on. Is that better? Yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> right, sorry about that. Um, keep forgetting to press the little button. Um, but yes, it's um, just following on from the bit about soldering. Uh, I've done it with classes as a school kid, most of my career as a school teacher. Um, and it's, I've had classes up to 30 and so on to deal with that. And it's an opportunity to do a little bit of 
say health and safety education with them before you start. <laughs> but after that, yeah, with a bit of luck, if if um, if you've taught, told them exactly which end to get hold of, you're pretty safe. And uh, we've had them soldering. One thing I did with little amplifiers, it was in one or two transistors, audio amplifiers, little loudspeaker, and then making uh, get them to make a crystal set to uh, plug onto it to make it uh, come through on the on the loudspeaker, which they usually found was quite interesting. And uh, it went towards one of the Crest Awards, if any of you around here have heard of that, which is a, a sort of a, a science and technology award that you can get via the British Association for Advancement of Science, or whatever they call themselves now. So that's another good thing. So it, it should be good that we could get all sorts of circuits up like that, Stuart, I think. Yeah, thanks, Gerald. I've, I've got a question for, um, for, for scout leaders here. Um, one, of, one of my friends is a school teacher in Shore in the borough of Oldham in Manche Greater Manchester. And he's a, a licensed amateur that set up a school radio club. And um, I think they've now got 11 kids with their foundation license in his school. But the one thing that they've been very excited about is building uh, themselves, which they've done in the workshop in the school, an aerial for two and 70 to enable them to work through satellites uh, on VHF and uh, UHF. And uh, quite a few of the kids now have actually successfully themselves uh, worked through the transponders on satellites, which has really gathered their imagination as you can, as you can imagine. Um, and I just wonder whether there's a, a bit of scope uh, when we do run a radio station again for, for setting up a specific uh, satellite station uh, there to uh, to see who would be interested in that particular activity. Absolutely. That's something you've ever tried, Stuart? No, it's in my list of things to try, um, but I need to play myself and actually have a go myself um, before I try with uh, the kids. But no, it, that sort of thing will capture their imagination. Yeah, they're very much beginners. Uh, Chris, who's the radio ham there, had never done satellites before. And uh, he came along to Robin Mosley's talk here at Denby Dale earlier in the year on uh, on satellites and the International Space Station and was just completely transformed. You know, he said, my my one project is to build an aerial for me to, uh, to operate uh, and to do this. And he's done it. So all credit to all credit to them in the school there. Right, who else, who else is there? Yeah, Dave, 2E0OAI. Yes, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, great to Manchester North Scouts and a member of Oldham Amateur Radio Club. And thanks very much, Stuart, for a very interesting uh, talk. Uh, the club have been doing uh, Jamboree of the Air for about 20 years for the uh, Great Manchester North County. Uh, I was uh, ACC Activities, uh, and, and that got me into amateur radio. Uh, and two of my grandchildren as well. So it was very successful. But you mentioned this uh, uh, this school in Shaw. Well, I'm sure it's the uh, the school where we've assisted a, a couple of the members uh, who got the foundation, and we, we, we helped them as a club just before the first lockdown mm -hmm. to uh, to get their intermediate, which they successfully done. Uh, they they actually did the uh, the examination online. Uh, and one of them, uh, is, although he's moved now, he's at university, uh, went on and got his full licence online as well. So uh, that club is, uh, is very successful uh, and we're hoping, oh, the schools, and we're hoping uh, when we can all get back that uh, we can get an affiliation with, uh, with the radio club and that school uh, for the young people. So I think we've all recognised how important young people are uh, uh, in the hobby. And... Uh, uh, and certainly what uh, you guys are doing and, uh, and what the scout leaders are doing uh, for the young people uh, is, uh, is, is wonderful. So uh, I can only thank you from, from them. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Yeah, Compton House School. So it's, it's okay. definitely that's, that's the school you've been, you helped yeah, at. That's wrong. Um, I, I've got a question um, uh, Steve, Stuart raised um, about uh, SOTA. Uh, we have got a Sota Peak uh, very close to Denbydale in uh, in Black Hill, just uh, uh, in between uh, Holmfirth and uh, and Oldham, uh, Dave, uh, on that on the Greenfield Road there. 
uh, and we we successfully did we not Dave uh, David uh, took a group of people up uh, to run some stations up there but uh, it will be great fun to um, go up one day with some scout leaders and scouts uh, up the Pennine Way onto Black Hill and set up uh, one or two radio stations and uh, and publicize it in advance for for scouts to make contact uh, there as well something we could we could maybe plan for later in the year, hopefully, when we've got this vaccine and we're able to go and do these activities, would be fantastic, I think. <laughs> David's just complaining it's a mountain, not a hill. <laughs> right, who else wants to come in on the discussion here? Anyone else want to chip in on this chat here tonight? If I can say a word. Yes, go on, John. Far away. Oh, sorry, Richard. No problem. Um, some of you uh, will recognise me, call sign. Um, you will remember me from times gone by, Gerald, uh, Darren. Um, I uh, once was, uh, for a very brief period of time, the youngest A-class amateur radio uh, member in the UK. Um, it was only for about six months until somebody younger came along and uh, stole that uh, <laughs> that privilege from me. Um, but the, uh, I've also been involved with 64th uh, Bradford South Scouts as well. Um, now, being involved with the, the radio club, uh, Denbydale uh, Radio Club, over several years um, since, probably since I was about, uh, about nine, ten years old, um, so that's, uh, that's about, about 33, 34 years ago. Um, I've been involved at various stages over the years, on and off. Um, I've been involved with the club on their own events, but also now in later years, uh, I've been more involved with the scouts and trying to get the scouts, um, my local uh, scout group, involved uh, with the club. Um, we've been involved in coming across to the Jotas, um, which is great. Uh, and now it's based at Bradley Woods as part, hopefully as part of one of their larger events as well. Um, there's a lot bigger uh, scout movement, a lot more people to influence. Um, I don't get to see these days how um, how, how, how much uh, the radio club gets involved with young people, but um, it's, it is still something that does interest the kids at that kind of age. Uh, I mean, it always interests me at that kind of age. I mean, my family were very much involved in it, so that made it slightly easier. Um, I was already at the events. Uh, but for these kids um, uh, and these younger people, I notice with them uh, an intrigue, uh, an excitement when it comes around radio. And it doesn't take much to, to, to grab them and get them involved. Um, and I think Gerald would probably agree with me when he's, he's, he's seen the young people over the years and how they've progressed. Um, the new licenses that have, have, uh, have developed. Uh, I mean, back when, uh, when I first started in amateur radio, um, I think the novice license was ever so slightly thought about back then. Uh, but there was basically, you got your A class and your B class license and that was it. Uh, quite a tall order for young people to, uh, to try and achieve. Um, I mean, I achieved it, and if I can achieve it, then anything's possible. Um, so I started doing that. I took me uh, the, my Morse code at uh, 12 words per minute at the age of 13, uh, age of 12, age of 13, and then did me, uh, me A class uh, portion of the license afterwards because I was actually too young to actually take the A class um, exam at the time. So I had to do it that way around. Um, but you didn't see many people um, of that kind of age doing uh, getting into the into the hobby. So it's great that, um, that scouting is still involved in that side of things. And I think obviously Denby Dale as a radio club uh, are still um, grabbing that opportunity. And it's those young people that we're trying to influence now that is going to continue and be our youth and our members going forward. Um, and it's just, uh, it'd be great if, uh, if, if that continues. Uh, and I think from, um, that's been going on, we've already discussed the kits and the bits and pieces and how, how, how the scouts get involved in that kind of thing. And as uh, thanks to Stuart as well, it's been a lovely talk. Um, 
but as Stuart says, when you get a, a room full of kids um, and you've got uh, separated them into groups of, of, of four and give them all each group a soldering iron, it is quite worrying. Um, it, you, we obviously the, the, the diversity of children and, and, and younger people that are involved in these events. Um, you give them a soldering iron, but they've never seen such a thing before, and it's um, they do like to um, how can I put it experiment. Um, and it usually the experiment the hard way and uh, they soon learn that uh, heat hurts um, but then it becomes funny so it's it's all good fun um, we've got to be slightly more careful these days but um, it's not quite as, as 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 easy and as open as it can be as it used to be but the uh, the kids do get a lot out of it um, and, the, and the kits and as Gerald says the old um, uh, the old uh, crystal sets used to be a big big favorite um, and now, obviously, there is kits seem to be coming back onto the market again. I notice a lot now when you do a, a search on the internet, um, we can get all of these little bits and pieces uh, quite reasonably uh, uh, available at a reasonable cost. Um, and uh, it'd be great as, as if more and more scout groups can get involved in that kind of thing. I think the communications badge has made this a lot, lot more accessible. Um, it does give them um, something to focus on uh, and it's really, really good. And it'd be great as, if the club can continue to yep. support the local scouting uh, with respect to that area. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks, Richard. Uh, and I mean, can I just say to uh, local scout leaders here in South and West Yorkshire um, uh, that definitely uh, quite a number of us in Denbydale Radio Club will be more than happy to uh, to do stuff with any of your local scouting groups. So following on over the coming weeks, um, I'll, I'll endeavour, and I'm sure you will, Darren and others, uh, to make contact and um, see what we can do to, uh, to help uh, bring our radios into uh, the scouts and, and you know, encourage some more of them to uh, get involved in this great hobby because it's, it's kept a number of us going from very, very young age, hasn't it? Right, uh, Jeff, M0AUG. Thanks, Nick. Uh, just one point on uh, on scout meetings and camps. Um, with the club that I'm involved with up in the Blackpool area, we did the scout camp uh, there at camp at Wadika this year. And one of the things that was quite successful there was direction finding. And uh, the RSGB have various loan kits available for affiliated clubs. And we, in actual fact, were able to borrow five transmitters and 10 receivers and uh, no cost at all. All we had to do was provide the headsets and the batteries. And if any one of the aerials boat broke, then uh, we just stuck a, a crisp five pound note back on that radio when we sent it back. And they're all insured and everything both ways. We didn't even have to pay every, every uh, return postage. And it was very successful for them to play with it. Brilliant. Good to know, Darren. Yeah, that, that's that's a, a very good, Jeff. Thanks for that. Uh, that sounds something. Definitely, we could have some fun with that. I think um, so. Thanks. Good, good, uh, good point. Right. Anyone else want to speak before I chuck the microphone back to uh, Stuart? Yeah, go on, Darren again. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you mentioned earlier uh, SOTA, which is summits on the air for those who uh, don't know. Um, I'm assuming scouts still do a lot of hiking, etc. It was certainly one of the things I always used to enjoy. Um, and I've often wondered if that's a good way of getting scouts into radio and into uh, everything else that involves walking up mountains, map reading, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wonder if the scout leaders, what are the thoughts on, on that sort of activity? Basically, the idea of sort is you, you walk to the top of, of, a, of a mountain and depending on its height, they're all worth different points towards an award system. But the idea is you walk to the top, you make contacts with, um, other radio amateurs or other scout groups if they're out and about um, and then either move on to another one or do another one another day. Hmm. I know you've done quite a bit of that, haven't you, uh, Nick? I, I have indeed, Darren, yeah. And uh, I mean, the, 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 our most local uh, SOTA hill recognised by summits on the air uh, for award purposes is Black Hill. Uh, but obviously there are lots of other places and we've got members of our club, uh, two of our two of our older members, uh, Barry and Brian, uh, both of whom have gone off um, to find trig points, haven't they? And uh, operated stations from the uh, 
trig points in various locations of which there are many of them on the hills nearby so um, uh, I think we've got uh, <laughs> poor old David uh, we've got uh, we've got a great uh, great opportunity up here in the north of England to uh, to find hills and and small mountains <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, anyone else want to uh, to come in on the discussion before I hand the microphone back to Stuart for any final comments? Yeah, a quick one there. Yes, go on, John. I think um, one of the real dead hands nowadays, or certainly from watching my kids going through school, is a dead hand of health and safety. Nobody does anything in case someone might get hurt and sue. Um, that and CDT, craft design and technology, which seem to be a dreadful mishmash of little bits of things that lack enough depth in any of it to get any benefit from it. Um, I don't know if other people feel the same, but I mean, soldering irons, I got given one for my birthday and that was it. I went off and realised it was sharp, but I mean, at age 11, I was building live chassis radios with two pin plugs on because I couldn't afford the proper transformer. I don't know, times have changed. And I don't always think all for the better. Leave it at that. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Stuart, uh, as a scout leader, just pick up um, uh, what, what scouts get up to. So um, uh, he, can, he can comment on that, John. Right, anyone else with any comments before we, uh, before we hand back to Stuart and just pull this bit of the meeting to a close? I have uh, just one. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Off yeah. the top of my head, idea. Um, GPS is radio, of course, and every little iPhone has a GPS thing in it. And you can get an app now that uh, tells you your maidenhead locator yep. on the GPS. And you could hand the, the scouts a map of the world with all the IO 92s and IO 93s on it and say, guys, where are you? without uh, looking at the map on the GPS, just use to teach them about locators. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, good point. Okay, Stuart, uh, I've got no one else busting to get in now. First of all, thank you everybody that's contributed to that discussion and uh, particularly the, uh, the local scout leaders, because uh, we'll come knocking on your door and you come knocking on our door as well for, um, for help from club members. Stuart, do you want to just uh, uh, make any final comments and kind of wrap it all up for this evening? Uh, yeah, um, just a couple of things from Darren and John's um, comments. So for the health and safety side, we're still out, we're still doing things, um, playing with knives, playing with fire. It's all about thinking and warning occasionally. So, you know, you obviously with a knife, you'll go, this is the pointy end. Don't put the pointy end into you. Don't cut towards your leg. And you write it down somewhere that you've told them that. Um, one thing I did, I forgot to mention about, you should be writing risk assessments. They don't have to be too hard. They don't have to be difficult. They just have to be a... Is there a chance of them electrocuting themselves? No, because I put covers over everything. Is there a risk of electrocuting themselves? No, because I told them not to stick their fingers where they shouldn't be. You know, you can cover it like that. But if you've written it down, you've protected yourself, all's good. Um, so the soldering arms, you know, is write it down, all, and that's fine. Um, and in terms of the going outside, walking, we still do. It's all really good. Um, the only thing to be aware of with some of the summits on the air, some of them might, there's limitations on what you can do as a leader. Sometimes you have to do further training. Um, so you might find they will start talking about train two and train one. Um, realistically, it's below 500 meters is, you don't need any permits to go walking for those. Uh, sorts of summits and there's a certain distance from a road you've got to be um so within half an hour you can walk to a road then that's fine um but yeah absolutely it's get out on the hills if you can do lots of things at once it's great um it just all starts marking things off 
and yeah it is all about getting out there having fun and inspiring and sparking that interest so they follow up and go and do something about it and hopefully join us playing with radio okay brilliant Stuart thank you for that and uh, can, can we first of all just show our appreciation to Stuart in a normal way for his contribution to the meeting tonight so thank you Stuart uh, that was very good and I, I have shared in the chat uh, I did put into the chat the uh, the file you sent me of your slides. So if people want to download the slides with the various links, it's in the chat box uh, on the computer screen in front of you. And you can just download the PDF file uh, that uh, that Stuart sent me. So I'm going to um, uh, just pull this bit to a to a close and thank Stuart and thank everyone else for their contributions tonight. Um, one of the things I, I'm not alone in hoping this, that as we begin to come out of this pandemic uh, next year, one of the activities that will be encouraged, uh, certainly to start with, is outdoor activities. And as the weather improves, of course, uh, it makes it uh, more feasible uh, with, with scouting groups in particular. So um, that's definitely something that we can do and uh, support here from the Denby Dale Club. Uh, and we can face in both directions, can't we? We can face uh, south a bit uh, down to uh, Barnsley and Silkston, and we can face north uh, to Huddersfield and across from there to Wakefield and so on. So uh, I, I think we've got great potential and uh, very, very, uh, some very good suggestions came up from the meeting tonight. So thank you very much. Someone's just said they can't see the slides link. I put it in the, if you open the chat box, um, I'll just put it back in again. Uh, there, I've just put on it a file. I'm just gonna redo it. That was you, Edward, just saying you couldn't find it. <coughs> Called Scouts Amateur Radio PowerPoints. It's just <laughs> uploaded now. If you click on it, so I've just put it into chat. It's the last item in the chat box there. If you click on it, uh, you can uh, download it from uh, from there. Just click on it to open and then download it to your computer. Okay, thank you everybody. I'm gonna turn the recording off and uh, thank everyone for their participation.